Let's start talking about how you would use triangles to make a smart trading decision. Now, chart patterns are well defined and well documented in literature. They're, they're nothing new. It is the psychological phenomena that occur between buyers and sellers in liquid markets. And certain behaviors of buyers and sellers happen to form patterns. And these patterns tend to recur over time. And we've interpreted these patterns. And they are an actually interpretation of the psychology of the markets. But certain things tend to happen when certain patterns are created. So I'm sure you've heard about chart patterns and the relationship to technical analysis. And you've also probably heard about things like double tops and triple tops and heads and shoulders and rectangles and God knows what. But in order to have a complete understanding of chart patterns, we should also gain an understanding of one of the most common patterns. And today we're gonna to be discussing triangles and my triangle trading strategy. Now, in this chart, I call it market structure. These are some of the most common patterns that appear for traders and a trading chart. Okay. Double bottoms, bull flags, bull pennants, ascending wedges, descending wedges, triple tops, bear flags, bear pennants, inverted head and shoulders, upright head and shoulders, cup and handle. Now, these are the ones that are respected in the marketplace. There's all kinds of, I mean, I just saw the other day, somebody, well, we have bat wings, we have flying saucers, we have all kinds of things, people coming up with things all the time. These are the patterns that have withstood the test of time. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of these that kind of, <coughs> look what I call, triangles because in our type of trading and in my world i don't separate i don't spend my time looking for all of these odd and end patterns that weirdly show up in your charts okay i look for something that's reliable when it shows on my chart shows up in my charts quite often and that I can make an easy strategy that works over time. Okay. Now, if we were to lump together all of these things that people call triangles, and we we have ascending triangles, descending triangles, um, symmetrical triangles, in my viewpoint, and a lot of people, a triangle is basically what we were taught in grade school. A base and two, ang two sides converging on each other. And the difference from one triangle to the next is the angle of degrees that is converging on each other. Do you remember when we were taught 90, 90, and 90? Well, kind of, that's like a symmetrical triangle. But if you have a 60, 90, and a 120, still a triangle so i say throw all of that weird stuff out there and let's just call them triangles anything that's got a base and two sides that are converging upon each other that are forming an apex so a triangle pattern is a specific figure formed on the price chart typically identify when tops and bottoms of prices price action are moving towards each other like the sides of a triangle when the upper and the lower level of the triangle inter inter interact, traders expect an eventual breakout from that triangle. So as such, many breakout traders use triangle formations to identify breakout entry points. So imagine, very simplistic, it sounds very easy, very simple to see a triangle. Now, a lot of people wanna make trading very, very, very complicated. You know, they have these charts that are so involved 
that I get lost looking at them. They're using so many scanners and robots and, and technical stuff and all this other stuff to make a decision. Fact is, in our type of trading and CFD trading and in short-term trading, what do you have? You have 50% chance the price can go up, 50% chance the price can go, to that, go down. Come on, let's not make it overcomplicated. But we can't trade successfully at 50%. That's guessing. We have to be able to come up with strategies at, that increase our probability ratio, that give us an edge on the markets. Now, the fact is, over the years, all of these gurus and people in the markets have put all types of explanations as to what you should do when you see a specific pattern appearing. Same thing that they do with Japanese candlesticks. You know, when you see a bullish engulfing, you're supposed to blindly do this, or you're supposed to do that. And the fact is you get predisposed to these interpretations. Forget about it. I just care when I see two lines of a triangle coming together, price moving into the center, what can I do? What will I do? What's the possibilities? How can I come up with a decision to trade? And how can I move the probability of that trade being successful in my favor? Or how can I reduce the possibility of loss? Now, the first thing about a triangle, and it holds true, regardless of what shape you're finding, is the base, the width of the base of the triangle whether it's a symmetrical, a rising triangle, a wedge, whatever it is, the base will help you determine when the pattern breaks out of the triangle, how far that price might move. Because that's important to you because you have to have a target because you can't set your risk reward ratio without an, a potential target price. because You'd never ever trade unless you have a risk reward ratio that fits your trading philosophy. So the base of the triangle will help us determine the move. But as you notice, my charts, I haven't decided, even though this is a symmetrical triangle, I haven't decided whether it's gonna go up or down I haven't even seen a breakout yet. And a breakout isn't simply just a matter of breaking the, the side of a triangle. But what we need is a breakout. Now, we don't often care about which way the trend is going. We don't really care if we're trading against the trend or with the trend. We're only concerned with what happens when the price moves into the apex of that triangle and when it breaks out of that triangle. So we can't make any determination regardless of what pattern we're looking at until we get a breakout. Period, the end. Until it breaks out of the triangle pattern. We're just guessing if we guess it's going to be a continuation pattern or it's going to be a reversal pattern. Nope. We're waiting for the markets to tell us what's going to happen. Now, you should always wait for the close of the candle to confirm the breakout. Okay, you have lots of times where price will break through the edge of a triangle, but it go right back into the center. Okay. Before you have a breakout, you need to identify this pattern on your charts. And then you need to be ready 
and you have to move quickly once you get the breakout because it, it's not like you have one, two, three, four more candles to make a decision because that breakout has to be traded at the time of the break, not down the road. So you have to have a tried, true way of doing this. So when you get a break from any type of triangle, what do you have to do immediately? You need to first, you're not gonna make, you're not making a trade, you're not executing anything. You need to set your buy point or the point at the price in which you would buy. You need to figure out where you would put your stop loss and you need to figure out what your target point would be. Because these are the three pieces of information you need to have before you can even decide whether you're going to trade. Now your stop loss should be placed slightly below the lowest wick of the candle before the breakout. Your buy point should be at the close of the breakout candle. Now, since we're trading in a short term basis, you should be looking at a five or 10 or 15 minute chart, not a one hour chart and trying to make a decision where the market is going to be hours from now. So once we identified the candle, once we've identified the pattern, and then we get the breakout, we would calculate our stop loss, our entry point, our target point. Now, one of the most important things you have to remember, because you've got to fix, set your target point and your stop loss to calculate your risk reward ratio. But if your stop loss, because sometimes a triangle base is very, very wide, if there is a major resistance level or support level between you and that target point, you've got to reduce that target point below that next major resistance point and then use that to calculate your risk reward ratio. So what do you have? You've now got your stop loss. You've got your enter point. You've got your target. But you haven't made a decision to do anything yet. You're just sitting there looking at your charts. So. You can't just blindly say, ah, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna buy. So this is called your breakout candle. This is the candle that broke out. The next candle is called your confirmation candle. That confirmation candle doesn't matter whether it's red or green. The confirmation candle must stay outside of the triangle formation. There's lots of times it'll break out and go right back in. The third thing you need is you need to be execute. At this point, you've set up your buy or your sell, depending on which way we're going. And you set up your buy point, you set up your entry point. So this is a candle that would trigger your buy not the end of this candle, that buy should have been set up at this point. You should be in the markets at this point. Now, if this candle moves against you, guess what? Your trade never got executed. If the trade goes in the direction you select, it's executed and you would make the profit. If this candle remained out and then this candle moved up, so your, your trade was executed and then reversed to move down, the worst thing you can happen if the market completely crashed is you get stopped out here. But if you were smart, you would have closed your trade when it went back in here. But you've got your stop loss to protect you. 
So what's happened is we've now moved the odds in your favor and given you a high probability of success because if the market moves against what we were what we're predicting with the the breakout candle the confirmation candle guess what the trade never got executed so you did a little sweat and you lived a little time but you never got an executed trade not executing a trade isn't a loss and you haven't done anything okay. so only one or two things happen if you execute a trade you execute the trade and the market's moving in your favor and you make good money or you execute the trade and not you, because you've already set it up on the computer. Okay. The system executed your trade. Or you execute the trade and the market then reversed and moved against you. Well, I'm not telling you this trade has an 80%, 90% success rate. It's got a high probability rate of calculating your potential profit, your small losses, remaining a small loss. And you have the ability to trade successfully. So we don't care whether it's a symmetrical triangle. We don't care if it's an ascending triangle. We don't care if it's a wedge. We only care that the price is moving into the apex and then it breaks out. Breakout, confirmation candle, execute trade. Okay, so we have stop loss, breakout buy point here, and we would then set our target point. We would wait for that confirmation candle. So again, stop loss below the lowest wick, slightly below, a buy above the close of the breakout candle, and wait for the execution. Breakout candle. So you see, we've set our limit. Based on the base of the triangle. Stop loss slightly below the lowest wick. We executed a buy and the price moved in our markets. In our, our direction. In a downtrend, it's the exact opposite in an uptrend. And again, doesn't matter what type of triangle it is, same process. So let me pop up some live charts here for us. Now, I'll try to magnify this for you. So here's an example, beautiful symmetrical triangle. Don't care that it's a symmetrical triangle. Nice width of base. We got a breakout candle, correct, right here. But look at the confirmation candle. Confirmation candle came back in the triangle. We would have never executed a trade because the confirmation candle did give us confirmation. But this is a way that you can also combine it with other indicators. But with my simple little strategy, what's the kicker that gives you the final boost to make that set up the trade and make it is volume. Volume has to support the breakout. When you get the breakout, if you don't get a jump in volume, then you didn't get the final confirmation of the trade. So again here, we've got a triangle formation through a very steep uptrend. But again, we're sitting here and we can't tell whether the breakout's going to be down or up. 
we have our level support and resistance. So we know we have a very wide base. So we know that we can't set our, our limit, our target points beyond those. And we have to wait for the breakout. So in this case, we got a very strong breakout. Going up, we got the confirmation candle and we would have executed a trade and we would have been able to gain all of that profit. So again here, breakout candle, confirmation candle, execution. Now, this is a very typical thing that happens and this is why we don't set our stop loss so close. We set our stop loss right below the lowest swing low before the breakout. So our stop loss in this case would have been set about here because this we can't use for a stop loss. This was a freaky kind of trade at one moment. So we would have set our stop loss somewhere around here. This is after trade. Now what happens is a breakout candle, confirmation candle, trade, Price is going to move back in, but didn't really move deep in. But we would have let the trade would have stayed open. And then the market would have given us some nice little profit. So this happens quite often. All you're looking for in reality is some place to execute a trade and some direction in which to execute that trade for and somewhere to set your stop loss because that's all that you can really do. You can examine it, re-examine it over and over and over again. But all you're looking for is a clue to a high probability trade. So here we got our breakout, confirmation candle, we had a slight retest of the mark of the can and then we got a surge up you would have been able to trade it all the way up into this resistance level again we got another hold on a second let me get this cleaned up for you so here we got the breakout but we didn't get the confirmation. And this is where it gets screwed because we never executed a trade. Now here, here, here. Now in this trade, we actually didn't get the breakout until we reached the apex of the candle. And we didn't get anything that gave us anything positive to do. Because we got a, the retest of the trend here. We got a whole bunch of no movement and then you can see the markets continued and fell straight down. But look at that as we got the breakout of the can, we got really no support and volume. It wasn't until much later that volume started to increase. So we're constantly looking for breakout, confirmation, execution. Oops. So again here, we got the breakout, the execution, the confirmation candle and executed a trade. And again, what we've done is we've broken this trade into three possibilities. One, you never had a trade. You never made anything. You set everything up, but you didn't actually trade. Two, the trade broke up in your direction, but then fell and became not a successful trade. But you got out of the market for the small, tiny loss. Three. So the market moved in your favor and you made some sizable profit. As long as the market moves in your favor enough times to offset your losses, at the end of a day you or the end of a week's trading, 
or the end of a strategy, you've ended up with net profit, then you've done the right thing because you can't trade 100% right. You can't even trade. I mean, all you're doing is looking to move the odds above the 50-50 level. So if you can move to 60-40, guess what? You're a very successful trader. Because the whole thing comes down to limiting your losses when the market doesn't do what you thought it would do. So what we're doing is we're always trying to move the odds in our favor. So when a pattern ends, one of the biggest things, volatility dips to a minimum. Support and resistance lines will be close and the market will show some preferred direction, but there's never a guarantee. You need to wait for the breakout. So while there are instances when triangles mark important trend reversals, they more often mark a continuation of the current trend. Regardless of the nature of the pattern, continuation reversal, the direction of the next move can only be determined after a valid breakout. Now, some things that will help us make a party decision is trend. The better the formation of the triangle, the cleaner it is the more accurate your trade is going to be. So when you're looking at a triangle forming over a whole bunch of erratic price movement that doesn't have a well-qualified trend, because you can have an uptrending movement, hypothetically, that looks like this. And that's harder to hell to make any heads or tails in. Or you can have an uptrend that. So the quality of the trend helps the quality of your decision. Volume. You should see volume contracting. We call this the calm before the storm. Right before the breakout, when the trader is trying to make a decision, you see this calm before the storm. When price breaks out, if the market believes that the price is going to move up from the breakout or down from the breakout, more traders will start entering the market and that will help you get the confirmation, volume increases. Duration, if you're looking at a triangle that's lasted over the last two days, and price, you know, you kind of got it drawn on your charts. It's not as valid as, the, because we're trading in short-term markets, it's not as valid as a triangle that's existing on your 30-minute you know, chart. And remember, breakout direction. The future direction of breakouts can only be determined after the break has occurred. Sounds obvious enough, but attempting to guess the direction of a breakout can be very dangerous. A break should be on the closing basis for it that can be considered a breakout. So in other words, it didn't just go out of the triangle, it closed outside the triangle. And then you need that confirmation candle. Because remember I showed you, price has a tendency of returning back towards that apex. That's why your stop loss is set below the low of the swing low before the breakout, because it tends to return into the apex and then soars up in the direction or down the direction you would want it. So keep that in mind. And then price targets, okay? There's all kinds of ways that people want to predict them. The base set on the breakout, but stopped at it, not the next level of support and resistance, the next major level of support and resistance and use that, having Fibonacci's on your chart are really a good way to use your breakout, your candlestick base, because Fibonacci's are wide enough apart that will help you see where you can, because you're only estimating where the limit would be so that you can calculate your risk reward ratio. So to sum it up, Triangle patterns are easy to spot and provide good risk reward opportunities. Traders can quickly know that a big move may be near 
as well as a profit objective and the amount to be put at risk. So now that you have the knowledge of these three powerful price patterns or this group of powerful patterns, you're steps closer to becoming a more confident trader. So thank you very much for joining us. And I hope you learned a little bit or gave you something to think about. I can't teach you how to do this. It's a matter of you practicing. I gave you the formation of how you might want to start seeing this strategy in your minds. Now practice it and make it your own and then interpret it your own. Understand, look at all the different times you get a breakout. Look at what the confirmation candle looks like. Get it into your soul and then you'll be able to be a successful trader. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye now.